Now that you know the rich characteristics, we are going to learn the core, the delta, and the rules or conditions in locating them. So it is important to identify or to locate the core and the delta because these are the focal points of fingerprint uh, analysis. So once the fingerprint analyst or examiner takes hold of the fingerprint impression, he has to locate the core and the delta first before he could uh, move to reach counting, to reach tracing, or for any other purposes. So we have here the core and the delta. The core is the point on the ridge formation usually located at the center. So that is why it is called the core because it is at the center or heart of the pattern. The core is also known as inner terminus. While the delta or outer terminus is a point on the ridge formation at or directly in front or near the center or the divergence of the type lines. Now what are these type lines? So here we have the type lines and the pattern area. We have figure A and figure B. Please assume that figure A is a nice drawing. So we have your ridge A, ridge B, ridge C, ridge 1, ridge 2, and ridge 3. While in figure B, we have ridge A and B. Here we have ridge A and B as the type lines. They enclosed the pattern area. In figure A, we have ridge C and ridge 1 as the type line pipelines so it means that the pipelines are the two innermost ridges that encloses the the pattern area this here we have the two innermost ridges that enclosed the pattern area please know that the pattern area is the only part of the finger impression with which the fingerprint analyst is concerned with regard to interpretation and classification. The pattern area is, or is, I mean, it is present in all patterns. However, in many arches and uh, dented arches, it is impossible to define the pattern area. But it is not relevant because the only patterns where the pattern area needed to be defined for the purpose of classification are the loops and whirls. So again, we have here the type lines and the pattern area. Now we move on to the rules in core location. The core is placed upon or within the innermost sufficient recurve. So we have here a recurve, another recurve, and a recurve. So where is the core? Here, the core is placed at the innermost sufficient recurve. So that is rule number one. For the second rule, when the innermost sufficient recurve contains an uneven number of rods rising as high as the shoulders, the core is placed upon the end of the center rod whether it touches the looping ridge or not. So we have here rod 1, rod 2, and rod 3. It's an odd number. The core is placed at the center, at the end of the center rod. In figure B, we have here rod 1, rod 2, rod 3, rod 4, and rod 5. The core is placed at the center rod, at the end of the center rod. So again, this rule is for odd number of rods. For this rule, it is for even number of rods. So when the innermost sufficient recurve contains an even number of rods rising as high as the shoulder, the core is placed upon the two central rods being treated as though they were connected by a recurving ridge. So we have here rod 1 and rod 2. You treat them as though they were connected. So you can draw a an imaginary line or I, I mean an imaginary recurving ridge connecting the two rods and then going back to rule one you place the core at the innermost sufficient recurve for this figure we have rod one rod two rod three and rod four again you treat them as though they are connected so this rod is connected with this one 
and this rod is also connected to this one and then going back to rule one the core is located at the innermost sufficient recurve then for this rule when there are two rods in center so we have here rod one and rod two the one that has the higher shoulder line the upper point of that ridge is considered as a point of core so here we have the higher ridge and the core is located here at its uh, end so that is the fourth rule in core location now we move on to deltas fingerprint deltas are only present in loops and whirls and we have various forms of deltas like the dot the bifurcation the ending ridge the meeting of two ridges the point of the first recurving ridge the opening of the bifurcation the ending ridge at the point of divergence we have here examples so we have here the dot the bifurcation it's called bifurcation because it bifurcates we have the recurving ridge the meeting of the two ridges short ridge and an ending ridge so th those are the various forms of deltas now we have here the rules in delta location so we have here a figure in this figure the dot mark delta is considered as the delta because it is the first ridge or part of a ridge nearest the point of divergence of the two type lines so we have here ridges and a dot we have here the type lines type line x and type line y it is here where they diverged and the dot being the first ridge nearest to that point of the divergence it is it is at the point of the divergence it is considered as the delta so that is the first rule in delta location we also have this one the delta may, be, may not be located at a bifurcation which does not open towards the core so we have here the core we have here a bifurcation and another bifurcation and a bifurcation that that is a uh, closed the Delta is located here here we have a bifurcation and a dot so when there is a choice between a bifurcation and another type of Delta equally close to the point of divergence the bifurcation is selected so we have here the bifurcation and the delta I mean a dot you choose the bifurcation as your delta for this one we have here a series of bifurcations opening towards the core at the point of divergence of the two type lines so we have here the type lines C and B the bifurcation nearest to the core is chosen as the delta so we have here the core and you choose the bifurcation that is nearest to it as your delta so that would be this one next rule we have the delta may not be located in the middle of the ridge running between the type lines toward the core but at the nearer end only so we have here the two type lines T and T type line 1 and type line 2 we have here a short ridge and the core would be at the nearer end I mean the Delta the Delta is at the nearer end towards the type lines near the point of divergence so that is rule number five for rule number six if the ridge enters the pattern area below the divergence of the type lines the Delta must be located at the end nearer to the core so we have here the type lines we have here a ridge that entered the point of I mean that entered the pattern area and it is at the point of divergence 
but unlike rule number 5, the delta is located at the end nearer to the core and not at the uh, the end towards the type lines. So that is rule number 6. Now if you have questions, you may always contact your instructors. Thank you.